fodder kobolds. Oh, they're the goblins? Yeah, yeah, I could do goblins. Yeah, I could make the goblins. Let's see, how would I make the goblins? You know what I base them off of, actually, is when I made a uh, five-week game project for a game design class. Yeah, there he is. There, look, look, look. That's Fugak. He's a he's a goblin. You can see that I used the design where he's got the like. Yeah, he would play the drums. He was a bard. He was a goblin bard. Look, he would like hop to one side. Of... All right. Actually, you know what? We're gonna procrastinate a little bit more. I'm gonna show you guys my game project. Okay. I'm gonna show you my game project. So this is called Wraith of the Woods. I did not compose that music. This music is by Musical Wolf, who made Minecraft note block songs or covers way way back in the day and this is one of his original compositions so yeah so we tried to have a story there's gonna be a lot of things you're gonna see that are cut so this is our main character her name is Derek uh, she's a Paula Dean and she's got this boar she's walking she's walking and she's like huh and then she sees this crack that's glowing it's like oh and then she's like oh no it's like it implies she knows what's going on and uh, this song I actually composed. Uh, this is an original piece, and there's the controls. So I'm gonna show you around, show you my game. I also drew this environment all handmade in paint.net. I was really sad. What I was gonna do was I was gonna make like individual leaves for the trees, but it was taking too much time. So, so it's just a big blob of yellow instead. But you can move around. Yeah, thanks. It does. I, I'm proud of it. You may notice this animation might look familiar if anyone's played the Mega Man Battle Network games, because I use those as a reference for Derek's animations. So you can see these little cracks, which were really simple to make. Oh yeah, I was I was gonna animate like some water over here, but I ran out of time. These rocks I'm really proud of, and these boars, which were supposed to only animate when they ran at you, but they're broken. Uh. <laughs> We never figured them out, so you would get in a proximity and then they would chase you down, but you see how he's running at you butt first. We do have animations for them running in eight different directions, but, you know, time constraints. So here's your little controls. This is the jankiest part. This is the jankiest part of this game because uh, you can't just press space to select and then select again because, I don't know, I guess my programmer was running into some problems. Um, by the way, all the visual assets you see are all originally made by me, except for an explosion that you're going to see. But like this menu and this UI I made. So you can select, you can go attack, potion, escape. Escape would just bring you back out here and then it would restart. We also have a restart button that if you press R you restart. And uh, I animated this whole scene, I was really proud of Derek's animation. And what was supposed to happen was we were supposed to have like a Mario RPG style minigame. So what was supposed to happen was when Derek's axe flashed white, you were supposed to hit the attack button to like do extra damage, but we never implemented that for any of the characters, so it's really basic. You also have a potion oh. that you can heal yourself, and they persist until you go to the next screen. This was five weeks, so we're just gonna kill this boar. Hacha! We also had an end screen that was like supposed to play some fanfare. Yeah, these rocks, you can see, you can go in front of and behind them. I don't know why your character's so jittery. You, you see how the camera like slowly follows you? I actually implemented that. I, I looked up a tutorial and everything. I did that. So here's another boar, but this time it's two boars. So we're just gonna take care of them. And you were supposed to be able to block, that's why she's got a shield, but again, we never implemented it. I actually don't like her running animation. I think I would redo it. Um, yeah, here's another one. And oh, what's that? This is a flying enemy. And this was supposed to be the reason why you need a party is because sometimes you can't reach other enemies. Derek, like I'm pressing right and you can't actually attack the one back there. I'm really proud of that flapping animation, by the way. And it would attack from range. So, but it didn't do much damage. So you would have to do that. And then it would slide forward really jankily <laughs> to the front. And you could attack it. Yeah. Oh, this is, I, I love... I'm really proud of the characters I designed for this game because they're all kind of unique. This is Floyd. So, uh, ignore the sprite phasing in, but uh, I'm also really proud of the portraits. If the grounds are cracking like this, th that must mean- th This was supposed to be played at the beginning. Having it finished? No. I, I feel like I'm done with this, this game. I, I don't think I would go back to it. I've got to find the others before he destroys the whole forest. So, she's playing the pronoun game. Who's he? Floyd! 
forest grounds are cracking and it's making the local wildlife go crazy. I think it must be Atticus. And then Floyd is like, correct. These anomalies are unstable and have a high probability of destroying life in a large radius. Might I suggest laying down, reflecting on your life and its impact on the world before it ends? <laughs> so he's like completely emotionless. He was supposed to be like, oh, it's, it's like a nihilist. God, I'm so proud of that sprite too. His portrait looks really good. I really like his portrait. Yeah, Floyd, except spelled with numbers and stuff. He's like a really broken down ancient machine who like has a really deadpan personality. Come on, we have to find Fugak and Beatrice if we don't want this place to turn up into a, turning into a giant crater. So now he's a part of my party, but not actually, because if I fought the boars back here, Floyd would not actually be a part of my party. He would just be a part of those encounters. Oh yeah, and really janky transitions. Like, uh, you don't actually transition, there's just a emptiness that way. So, uh, here's another boar. And you can see Floyd! Floyd's part of our party now. And he's the first ranged member of the team. And his minigame was supposed to be, you would hold, you would hold the attack button down and then let go whenever his crossbow flash. You see he's got a crossbow there. So uh, he also does a little bit less damage. Like that. So he's pretty cool. And he has a little exclamation point when he gets hit. So that's fun. And my favorite... I love all the character designs. This is Fugak, the goblin. And he's he's the best. They're all the best, but he's he's like especially the best. Look at him. Look at him. I love this goblin design. I don't know what made me design him like that, but he's got a little scarf. Ah, oh, he's so good. Fugak, thank you. Thank goodness you're okay. Derek, ground shaking, cracks glowy, Attic is in trouble, Fugak wants to fight! See, so he's real feisty. And, uh, she's like, glad you're on board. I hope we can get to be in time. Fugak will beat evil monsters so badly, we'll need eight generations to walk off pain of his whacking stick. So you can see, even even a year ago, I was doing uh, the simile humor. So now he's a part of our party. And Fugak is weirdly the most damaging party member. But what he was supposed to be was you were supposed to, like, mash the button. Like, you were supposed to mash space really fast because he's, he's beating people with his stick, right? His drumstick. But he was going to have, like, the lowest range. Like, his minimum damage would be 5 and his maximum damage would be 7. Wait, no, his minimum damage would be 7 and his maximum damage would be, like, 9. But that means that his damage as it is, is seven. So he's the highest damaging. And I love his anime. I'm so proud of that animation. Look at him hopping back and forth. He's like tapping the thing and he's hopping back and forth. I'm also really proud of this guy, this mask wearer. He's just like, huh, 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 huh. his little feather rocking back and forth. I, I had a lot of fun making this game. And he shows his behind the mask a little bit as well. This is really funny. He's like, meh. I'm really proud of the, the animations that I made in this. All right, so what? He's got nine, right? This this boar's got nine. Watch how much damage he does. He did he did seven damage. This is nuts. But yeah, you were supposed to mash. That's why he like does his little thing really fast. Yeah, let's just clear out these dudes. I'm just waiting for the game to break at some point because uh, this game breaks really easily. Sometimes the encounters don't work. Oh yeah, and Fugak's still here. There he is. Because... reasons. <laughs> oh, this game is... This game is really messy under the hood. Just so you guys know. Oh yeah, and the water's animated here. Yeah, this this actually took me a lot, a long time because... Like, I had to animate these sides individually. Like, all the way down. Like, the shore side. But underneath is just a tile. But yeah, you can see more cracks and it's just... There we go, here's a secret. So you would come here and there was supposed to be a chest that would give you like more potions. But your potions reset anyway. And we're gonna meet the other best character. They're all the best character. They're all the best. Uh, B. Beatrice, also known as Beatrice. And she has a honeycomb wand. And I love her. There you are, B. Let's go, Atticus is in trouble. And if we don't do something, this whole place could be- could crumble to pieces below our feet. Look at her, she's got a witch's hat. So her her deal, right, is she, look, Beatrice, her deal was she's like a witch, a young witch that an experiment went horribly wrong and it turned her into a bear. So that that's like, that's her deal, right? And she's also very timid. She's like, oh no, oh Derek, oh no, we're doomed, Derek, what are we gonna do? The monsters, the ground's cracking, I don't know if, B, please, you can do it. I know you can't. 
We can't do it without you, B. All right, okay. I'll do it. Let's save Atticus. So it's like, oh, but Atticus is supposed to be the one who's destroying it, right? I thought Atticus was the one who's destroying the world. So now we got B, and B's really cool. Um, oh, ignore that. B is uh, the caster, and uh, she's got some AoE. What is going on here? What happened? Did I just forget to put this on the wrong layer? Whatever, here's another secret, I guess. And uh, here's an encounter with all of the party members and all of the enemies as well. So look, she's got a honeycomb wand. I'm so pr- It is- Oh, I love her. I love these characters. I would love to reuse them in something. I'm just so proud of it. Oh, I escaped. Whoops. All right, so I think this is the fight that is most prone to breaking. So this might take a few tries. It's a feature, not a bug. Yeah. So Beatrice, Beatrice is really weird. Beatrice, I'm just gonna call it Be Beatrice. She's really weird because what was supposed to happen was she could do an AOE that would hit in like a plus. So if I hit this guy, it would hit the board behind him and then the two guys above and below him. But it's weird. It does this. Oh wait, no, it did it right. Never mind. Just kidding. So it did it right. That sprite I actually didn't make. That explosion animation. That's from uh, Metal Slug. One of the Metal Slug games, because they make awesome explosions. So here's a weird thing, right? So that bird went forward, right? And this bird is also going to go forward. But Beatrice's uh, AOE doesn't actually hit them, because they're still technically in the back. So I'm going to attack this guy, and hypothetically it should hit these both two, both these two, and the boar, right? But watch what happens. Nothing. Because they're still technically on the back tile. I don't know what my programmer's... Uh, my, my programmer, the one, what problem he was running into. Oh yeah, Beatrice's, uh... Her minigame was supposed to be, like, a bunch of... Um... Symbols? And what it was, it was it would be a button prompt. It would be a quick time event where you would have to press keys on your keyboard or just directional. Like it would be up, down, or left, or right, and you would have to press them in order for her to cast her spells. Kind of like Typing of the Dead, except just with arrows. But again, we didn't implement it. I'm super proud of her animation though. Her like little book flipping around. And I guess there's a little bit of strategy involved, like getting them all low enough to where you can use an AoE and like, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Oh yeah, the potions reset because they don't persist. Yeah, we were supposed to make emotes, but now we're looking at a game. So now it's like, oh, a change of environment. What's this? There's a big crack in the ground and it's glowing. And look at those clouds! I'm super proud of those clouds! I made I made them parallax scrolling. Parallax. They're parallax scrolling, and I'm super happy. Look at these floating rocks! I'm so proud of this environment! It looks good! And it's just three colors, too. Like, this was actually a result of me trying to save time. You know, it, it, I don't know, it, I, I still think it looks good, right? It still looks pretty alright. And then there he is. There's Atticus, the boss. Look at it. So he's like here, and it's like, oh, what's going on here? That's hot. Yeah, I'm super proud of his animation too. Like, just the overworld animation alone. Atticus! And I'm super proud of his design too. He looks rad as shit. Derek, it's too late for me now. The Wraith has almost completely taken me and will soon destroy the forest. It's time. I'm sorry. So now you've, you you learned that it's like, oh, Atticus is destroying the forest, but it's not his fault. He's been taken over by the Wraith of the Woods. That's the name of the game. There is still time. We can stop this. Yes, there is still time, but not for me. You know what you have to do. Yes, I do. It has been a pleasure, Derek. Likewise, it was nice while it lasted. Everyone, thank you, and goodbye. And you get this fight with this rad music that I found on YouTube. <laughs> I literally looked up generic boss fight music, and I'm so... Look at his animation! I'm so happy with how his, his wings came out. And it was like loads of fun to make. I'm so proud of this guy. Look at that. He has no... Yeah, he's just, a, he's just like a set of sentient armor now. How do I win? Okay, so this is where the game kind of devolves, because because there are no other targets, it just becomes a game of press attack until he dies. Because this is where the mini games of like attacking and blocking would usually come in, but because we don't have those, it doesn't exist. So, so now we just 
We just press attack a bunch of times until he dies. Oh yeah, you can shoot out of his sword because of reasons. And he slashes. And I'm just gonna use a potion. I want to show, he has three attacks. He has that single target, sword, shoot, he has a slash, and then he has a shield bash, which hits everybody. Show me what you got. Come on, shield bash. Coward, do what you want. There we go. Bam, hits everybody. Yeah. Because it like, it like, glow, starts to glow red and then bam. It's really neat. Get him. Press the attack button until he dies. There we go. Victory. Really anticlimactic. And then that's the end of the game. That's Wraith of the Woods, everybody. It's, uh... Yeah. I I'm still pretty proud of the art that I made in it. But, you know. Yeah. It's pretty alright. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get back to the music.